Minister, I think the one single biggest asset that OnPost has uh, is its local network, and you spoke about it earlier in, in your uh, initial uh, comments in relation to this. The difficulty is that OnPost sees its local network. I don't think that government is seriously looking at that asset in how it could be sweated to actually bring services uh, back into communities rather than centralising uh, those. Um, so, as the Minister could comment, Thank I've you. already heard your previous comment, Minister, Thank comment, you, so there's no point for probably reading those into the record again. Yeah, Minister. Well, I, I, I'm not sure so I agree with your Four questions, no. just the, the 11, 17, 31 and 35. Okay. Oh, oh so, sorry, did I not read out the formal answer? No, well, no I'm just saying, I'm calling you now. Yeah. <laughs> we're, start, uh, we're starting now. <laughs> uh, 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 all right, well, yeah, he, 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 uh, he, he, uh, the deputy doesn't want me to read it out, so <laughs> I, I won't. Um, uh, I'm not sure I'd agree with Deputy Nocton that uh, Unpost sees it as a cost uh, rather, rather than an asset. I, I mean, it's... It, that's not so much what that's not so much what is driving the pressure on the postal network uh, as the collapse of of its core business it's the collapse of mail volumes by 25 percent in the last five years uh, due to e-substitution and and so on uh, that that is the main that is the main problem and uh, i mean the fear on the part of the postmasters is clearly not so much uh, when they say that they might lose the social welfare contract, uh, I take that with a grain of salt. I think what they fear is uh, electronic funds transfer because the actual margin uh, per item transacted uh, would be of considerably less value to them than the traditional over-the-counter uh, uh, cash transaction. And I, I think that's what... Uh, uh, what what uh, what concerns them? So I mean, I I, I certainly agree with Deputy Nocton that the the, the postal network uh, is an asset, and and as I said earlier, I don't know anywhere that has 1,149 or whatever it is retail outlets uh, throughout the country, and uh, that's what the cabinet subcommittee uh, is now uh, is now looking at. Um, are there other products and services? Are there other ways in which uh, that network can be utilised uh, as a contact point with the public uh, for different government services. That's the issue. You have to do it, unfortunately, within uh, within uh, procurement and competition law. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is the case that if you were in France, we wouldn't be so scrupulous you, uh, about, about observing uh, 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 EU rules in this regard. But. But we are, and they apply, and I had a question earlier from Deputy Moynihan about uh, EU infringements. Uh, I don't know either whether it's always the case that they pursue the big the way they pursue the small, but uh, uh, you know, that is the law, and, and that is the impediment in the way. Thank you. Sabine Nelson. Um, I thank the, the Minister for his response. First of all, Minister, would you not agree with me that the, there is a very much a blink, blinkered approach being taken by UNPOST at the moment? I'll give you one example, Minister. That is in relation to the whole parcel uh, in the, of the sector, uh, an area that is actually growing now because of, of internet shopping. Uh, UNPOST have wound down that service, and you have a private operator developing the parcel motel uh, system across the country. Now, surely it made far more sense to UNPOST use its own local network to provide that service, uh, to allow people to shop uh, outside of this jurisdiction, the UK, the, U the US, uh, and provide the service for them. That didn't happen. Can I ask you, Minister? Uh, as, as you're aware, we discussed this issue on the 4th of December last. And on the 4th of December last, I gave you a couple of clear examples uh, where I felt there was potential to develop it, uh, the sector. The HSE now looking at local offices for, for medical cards, the Department of Agriculture in relation to the single farm payments. Now, you did give a commitment on that occasion to go away and investigate at the feasibility of progressing those, and you might just update the House if you have had any progress on those issues. Thank you, Deputy Minister. 
I did, uh, I did, and I have uh, Alaska and Korea, and it is part of the uh, submission that my department is making to the Cabinet Subcommittee on Social Policy. And indeed, I've gone outside of the two examples that uh, Deputy Nocton raised at that time. I mean, I'm also looking at what are the possibilities of pulling back, for example, driving licenses. Uh, I also wonder aloud uh, whether in uh, small villages where the Garda station has been closed, uh, whether there mightn't be a clinic uh, for the Garda to do four hours, uh, two days a week or something like that, uh, and so on. So all of these things, I mean, I've asked my, my, my cabinet colleagues in the relevant uh, areas uh, to, you know, um, come to the tape on this to see if there are things, new, new uh, services like that, that consistent with law that we can provide. Um, that's the purpose of the Cabinet Subcommittee taking a, a whole of government approach uh, to the issue. Thank you, Mr. Um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll have the cooperation of on post and the uh, the IPU in that regard, uh, asking call. Deputy Nocton. Deputy Moyne. Thank you. Um, can I welcome that and the next question I was going to ask Minister was specifically on the driving licenses because do you not believe that it was a huge mistake uh, the approach that was taken uh, with the driving licenses where you've now gone from a situation where you could apply via your local post office for your driving license you've now a situation where there's a handful of offices around the country and it's taken 10 to 16 weeks to process uh, that particular application uh, and can i say to you minister i think you know there is a unique skill set there with postmasters across the country and i think not only can you use it to revitalise the post office network, but more importantly, I think it can uh, streamline government. And would you not agree with me that by actually looking at services that the Minister, Minister Howland, is looking at centralising, converting them to an electronic processes, that you have a cohort of people that don't either have access to decent broadband or don't have the technology skill sets to use that. And the post office network can provide that vital link for that particular cohort of the population. So can I put Thank it to you, me. Minister, that while there may not be a specific saving by dealing with the small cohort that would still use the paper-based system via the local post office. What it does allow is that the, it significantly reduces the backup supports that are required for any national scheme, whether it be the local property tax and so forth, where the local pro post office can provide Thank the paper-based service and have your automated backroom service then on a national level and the savings can be made nationally while delivering the service Thank locally. You. Minister? Uh, well, I, I think there are very good social reasons in particular why we can't look at this question only through the prism of, of cost. Uh, I do accept that argument. Um, however, uh, the cliché that uh, Deputy Monaghan condemned earlier, uh, you know, like all clichés, has a grain of truth when he says that, you know, on post there's a commercial state company with a remit to do business, uh, you know, profitably and, uh, and so on. It doesn't get any exchequer uh, subvention and on post obviously and its directors uh, have to have regard uh, to that. I mean, my memory of the uh, driving license issue is that, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the tender was won on the basis of 40 outlets whereas I think uh, on post uh, had offered uh, some 200 plus outlets. And I think, you know, the experience anecdotally that I pick up is that it is proving inconvenient for people in many parts of the country and in Dublin. I mean, it's a bit of an undertaking to travel to the one location uh, to get your driving license uh, and get back to work and all the rest. So it is a good example. And as I say, I'm talking to my colleagues about it and. Thank you, Minister. Um, I, had, uh, I had enormous support, uh, Deputy, here a couple of weeks ago in private members' business. I have never had such a gale of force uh, of support behind me right across the House, and I hope that it'll, uh, it'll last. Thank you, Minister. Deputy Moyne has a question. Yeah, just Deputy, 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 Deputy,
on post have these retail outlets. They have a huge asset. And any other business within urban or rural Ireland, when they would see that the business would be declining because of uh, electronic communications and so forth, they would go after replacement business. And there's a huge volume of replacement business out there. And UNPOST and the Board of UNPOST and the management of UNPOST don't seem to, gra to be empowered or don't seem to empower themselves to go after a business to make the retail network sustainable. And until such time as it is either universally, uh, it, it, you know, that there's a, an obligation on them by their memorandum of understanding or that there's a policy direction from the, everybody to say that they have to go after these businesses. I think every deputy here has some uh, uh, ideas of what business they should be going after, but on post or the board of on post do not seem to be making any effort to ensure the viability of these post offices are making an attempt to make sure they're Thank viable you, going into the future. Thank you, yeah, Minister, in, in relation to the private members' business, more in, in, for most of your response, it certainly merited our support because you restated government attention as in the, the program for government to, to sustain the post offices and you also said that the government has no intention of, of, of closing post offices but further on in your response is the concern the, the bit that concerns me there seems to be a kind of a fatal acceptance by government that all trade is going to move from the town and village high street to shopping centers uh, to, to county and to provincial major centres of population. Now, that could be a self-fulfilling prophecy unless government steps in. Thank you, Deputy. That, uh, that could be something. If we don't have a strategy, it's going to happen anyway. And if that happens, then whether government want to or don't want to, not, will, not only will post offices close, shops, every business will close in the high streets of the towns and villages in this country. So I, I invite the Minister to look again at the response that he gave in relation to, 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 to that particular point. There's more to this country than major shopping centres in major centres of population. And we have to nurture what's precious out there in the smaller towns and villages, as well as looking after the, the cities. And that's Concorda. And again, I, my apologies for not being present for the beginning of the minister's reply, but I did hear it from a distance. I, I did uh, hear it from a distance. And uh, one of the things I think that is uh, emerging, uh, which I fully support, is the fact that the minister is committed to the ongoing provision of services through the post office, through the post office counter service, and the delivery service that's available throughout the country. Can I ask the minister, in addition to that, the extent to which he continues to encourage? Uh, likely suitable, uh, applicable services to be attached to and post, which could in fact broaden and spread uh, and, and spread their services throughout the country, could increase their viability, uh, could increase their longevity, and in actual fact could contribute largely to a, 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 an, in, an interaction with both urban and rural communities that is needed as we progress. As we progress, and I, I, I would have to say this: that in the past number of years, in the past number of years, great efforts have been done by the minister to ensure the retention of the surface of the post. Thank and I'll finish with this, uh, 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 last can corner. A one possible service that could be added on and is a necessary service is the collation of the voters' register, which, which is in need of an urgent review in most constituencies and counties throughout the country mm. and is eminently suitable as a bolt-on service to uh, I have two requests now, please, very briefly. Deputy Noxon and Deputy uh, Troy. Very briefly. Very briefly. Minister, as you know, the banks don't want customers coming in, particularly those dealing with cash or, or cheques, and this causes huge problems uh, for older people in particular. Can I ask you, Minister, you know, uh, can you ensure that when the NTMA contact, contract is being renewed, that that particular issue uh, is addressed? Because in a lot of cases, there's many older people uh, that use the government saving schemes, and like the system that is there in place through the community network provided by UNPOST. Come out, Deputy Troy. Uh, Mark, can I just ask the Minister in particular in relation to two services, and that being the payment of social welfare um, to, in the uh, post office network. As I highlighted last week uh, during the private members' debate, where the Department of Social Protective Protection is actively encouraging people to move their payment from the post office to bank accounts. And last week we learned where um, the payment for rent allowance 
is now going to be taken directly at source from social welfare payments. Thereby, it will be one other service, instead of encouraging and uh, pushing services over to the post office system, uh, last week we, we learned where a government department has taken a further service away from the post office, Thank you, Deputy. the payment of uh, the rent allowance is going to be taken directly at source. Come on, final reply, Minister. Well, alas, Concordia, it isn't the case that UNPUST has sat on its hands in this area. I mean, UNPUST has extended new business lines uh, over recent years in a whole range of areas, from Garda fines to gun licenses, insurance services, foreign exchange, post phone, extended banking services, tax pay, DHL, retail partnership, real-time waste top-up, Dublin same-day delivery, serve you, Secure Meter, the pilot scheme, many new bill payment customers added, significant growth in gift voucher business, uh, and so on. So it's not true to say uh, that they haven't uh, come up with new business uh, and so on. And I, I think what worries me a bit is the, uh, the proposition that it's the responsibility only of on post or the responsibility only of the minister or the government. I mean, uh, we're, we're talking about a network of commercial enterprises, privately owned. I mean, of the 1,147 retail outlets, only 57 of them are owned by on post. The rest are privately owned, and they too have a responsibility. And I would advise them, and I, I will be very positive about new ideas they come up with, provided it doesn't involve nailing post office to close on the door. Uh, which is what some of them are doing and which isn't exactly the most business oriented uh, uh, way forward because of course it isn't true uh, the government has no plan to close post offices and as I have already said uh, 197 post offices were closed between 2006 and 2010 and I didn't hear a squeak uh, from some of the people now who are concerned about the fact that since 2010, 17 have closed. Thank you, Mr. So we have to see this in perspective, and we have to see that there is a responsibility there on the part of the, uh, the, the, the people who manage the commercial offices. I agree with Deputy Durkin. Uh, I agree with Deputy Durkin. I think at a time uh, when the banks are uh, resiling from interaction with uh, average customers uh, at, the, at, the, at the bank counter, that there are possibilities here uh, for the post office, uh, given, given its, its, uh, its network of, of retail outlets. And they are and have been examining that, and some of the arrangements they have coming, come up with with the likes of the AIB uh, have been very positive. So um, I, uh, I want to assure uh, the concerned postmasters of Ireland that the post office is in safe hands. Thank you, Minister.